Hi, I'm Dr. Malgatapia. I am posting this to educate people about COVID-19. I've been posting a lot on Facebook and I've had a lot of friend requests, so I'm assuming a lot of people want to be informed. I've also been doing in-service at my nursing home, so I figured if I could just make a video, it'll be easier for everybody. So let me give you some background. COVID-19 is basically coronavirus. The key thing about the, the you need to know is it is a virus. That means if you get sick from it, there is no antibiotic we can give you as a doctor to make you feel better. It is a easily transmissible virus. That means it spreads easily. You can either get it as an airborne pathogen or a surface fan pathogen. That means if you can get it by air transmission or by surface transmission. If someone coughs or breathes on you and someone has the virus, you can get it that way. The other way you can get it is by surface. The important thing you need to know about the surface is it can sit on, on surfaces for a certain period of time. If someone coughs in their hands and touches the surface, that surface is infected. The things that you need to know, where it can sit on a cardboard box surface for 24 hours, glass surfaces for 48, and plastic surfaces for 72. So that means if a stock boy working at any of your local retail store or pharmacy coughs in his hand, puts it on a shelf, so if it's in a case of battery that has plastic in it, it's gonna be on the surface for 72 hours. If it's in a glass of soap that you pick up, it's gonna be on the surface for 48 hours, that's two days. And if it's in the cereal box or whatever carton you pick up, it's there on the surface for 24 hours. Thus, that's how it spreads. In addition to that, over 50% of the people who catch it are asymptomatic. That means they don't have a runny nose, sore throat, cough. I know they tell you that anyone over 100.5 and fever can be tested. However, there are other people who don't have symptoms that can be, that are infected. Now let's get to the numbers. What is important to know about the numbers? The simplest way to explain it is not the number of people infect, infected doubles every four days. If you have one patient on day zero, on day four, that one person will infect two people, so now you have three people infected. On day eight, those three people will get six people infected, and now you have nine infected. Basically, I've written a quick algorithm math math equation see how by day 24 you're at 729 infected right now if you carry that graph out the reason that's important to know is on the right side is the number of people infected the top number is 20,000 this is day 36 or a little over week 5 you're over 19,000 people infected Right? The reason that's important to know is when you see the phrase flatten the curve, you see this picture. I know you've all seen that and you all try to understand what that means. I will try to explain it to you. This rapid rise is the number of people infected. That's where you see all the people that are, are getting, getting sick. You go in the hospital or testing positive. See this line here? That line here? That is the number of hospital, the number of people that your hospital can handle in your area. So you understand the value of flatten the curve. If you have the sudden spike of people that get sick, anybody over this line is at risk of dying. Now I will explain the value of this later when we get to the actual numbers. So why is flatten the curve important? Let's take an example that we know of. Let's take Wuhan, China. Their first case was about December 9th, somewhere between December 1st or December 9th. I'm not really sure, but they basically had to lock the city down in terms, I mean lockdown after six weeks around December 22nd. In that around the time frame. They had so many sick people, they had to bring they had to build two hospitals in two weeks and bring in 40,000 staff members to manage the sick and to limit their mortality rate. Now, let's look at a recent case that we're, we're, we're aware of. This graph is Italy. See how they're doing the same number of, the same rate of growth? 
Their first infected rate was January 31st. This is March 8th, roughly six weeks later. And their number of infected was 12,400. As of yesterday, March 24th, roughly seven, seven and a half weeks from their first infected date, they are now at 74,386. That's the va that's where you see how rapidly it grows. You went from six weeks to eight, almost eight weeks, and you basically went from 12,000 to 70,000. The significance of the curve is when you get over that curve, like I said, more people die. In the past six days, they have had 4,098 people die or an average of 680 people every day. That is the value of keeping it below the curve because it appears that once they got over 60,000 people sick, they couldn't handle the, that they, that's when they exceed their hospital capacity. That's when you heard first they said they wouldn't treat you for over 80, then you, they would treat you for over 70, and then they wouldn't treat you for you over 60. They, they were way past their capacity. So how does the ex apply to the United States to say, well, you know, we that's that's a you know that's a ten percent mortality rate that couldn't happen here. We only we have what uh, over a thousand people dead already over seven thousand cases. Don't let the numbers fool you. What you need to do is focus at your local community. So when I say fo focus at lo your local community, you have to look at New York City alone, because New York City alone. Have, will have once they get over a certain number their mortality will rise to the point that their hospital capacity cannot handle anymore as far as for my friends here in the Kansas City metro area you have to look at Johnson County Jackson County and Wyandotte County as your core our first case in Kansas City was the gentleman who passed away on March 12th he was a nursing home resident at that moment, that would be our day zero. Ask yourself this. If he was a nursing home patient who got him sick, when he passed away at 2% mortality, there should have been, you can assume that there were already other 50 other people infecting the area. The, now, as far as numbers are concerned, if he March 12th was day zero, March 24th was day 12. So that's the 20th is when we're supposed to be at 81. Mm -hmm. We're way ahead of the curve. So we're doubling every three days instead of every four. We are already at 160 as of yesterday. So let's hope that we don't, that the enforced stay at home rule, regulation actually works in flattening the curve. And for everybody out there, look at your city. Do not, look, do not let the national numbers scare you. The national numbers has 6,000 infected and only 1,000 dead. That is not the true numbers because every pocket will have its own, should have its own mortality rate. And not only that, every city is roughly only three or four weeks into this. So you have to look at the curve. The graph I showed you, it doesn't spike until you get to week six or seven. Those are the numbers that, we, uh, that becomes valuable, not the second or third week. Kansas City, we are not even two weeks into this. New York is, probably, is only three weeks into this because their first case was March 1st. So they're not going to spike for another three weeks. They're not gonna start the spike for another three weeks and we'll, we'll peak at seven or eight weeks. The key thing is you gotta flatten the curb, isolate yourself. So what do we do for prevention? Well, considering that's airborne, that's why the distance and isolation is so important. If you stay at home, you don't go out, you don't infect others. Distance-wise, you have to look at roughly five feet as a good distance. So basically, if you hold your arms out like this and you double your arms length on each side, that's how close someone is to you. 
someone how close how close someone should be to you. If there are any closer than that, then make sure you give the, yourself space to protect yourself. If anyone is coughing, double that distance, because that's the only way you're going to protect yourself from any airborne particles. As far as surfaces are concerned, you should basically assume that any surface outside your house is infected. When I say any surface, I mean any surface. The gas pump, food that the person at the fast food line hands you, the ATM, all those assume that everyone is infected. Okay, let's go. Let's say you go to the gas station. You slide in your card, you punch in your number, you flip the handle, you pull out the pump, and then you pump gas. You've already touched three surfaces where that could easily be infected. The pin surface, the handle, and the, sur the thing that you flip. You've already risked an exposure in three different times in the less than a minute. If you touch a door handle, assume that's infected. And as far as carry out, assume that everything that you get from carry out is infected. What I do when I get a carry out to protect myself is basically I take my credit card out, I hand it to the cashier. When the cashier hands my credit card back, card on the chair beside me, and I take the food and I put that on the floor beside me. I sanitize my hands, I drive home, sanitize my credit card, I pick up the food, I bring it inside, I set it on the counter. I take everything out of its box, I open all the con containers up, I go wash my hands, I grab two plates, transfer everything from the containers into the plates, go put the containers, the, the container, the plastic bags in the containers away, throw it away, I wash my hands, I spray the countertop with Windex or what else, Lysol or whatever sanitizer I have, and then I wipe it clean. Then I eat, and after I do that, I go to my car, I, I take a sanitizing wipe or a Windex, and I spray the door handle, I spray the console, the button that starts the car, the handle that changes gear, basically make sure that every surface that the, the contaminant item could have come in contact with. And that's most importantly, the question of the mask comes up. Yes, mask help, I believe it helps. All the countries that have been successful in containing this disease, the first thing they did was hand masks out to people, all of their citizens of the country. There are two countries that I've been watching since all this happened. One is South Korea, the other is Singapore. Neither one of them, if you had a temp of 995, you couldn't get in the country. Every resident has a mask. Everyone kept their distance uh, when they went out. Right now, South Korea, they have a total of 9,240 9, cases and, 100, and uh, mortality of 131 people. That's a rate of 1.4%. Now, mind you, their first case was February, was middle of February also. So they're almost, they're five weeks into this. Singapore, same thing. They have 630 cases and two deaths. Their mortality rate is 0.3%. What they did was they identified the sick person, they isolated them away from their family, and they traced everybody else that was, they were, that was around them. That is the flaw in our system. That's the flaw in Italy's system, is when they quarantined them, they just sent them home. So that allowed them to get everybody else at home sick, and, that allowed, and they only tested those who were symptomatic. We are testing even less than that. We're only testing the ones who come to the hospital. I have 600 nursing home patients. I go to 10 different nursing homes and I can't get a single test in any of my nursing homes. Well, they could, but the guidelines are so strict that basically nobody gets tested. The masks are important if you work in a nursing home, not to protect yourself, but protect the residents. The residents aren't, haven't gone anywhere. They're not going anywhere. If they get it, somebody brings it in them. I would love for my staff to wear masks, but I know there's a shortage because if you're, when my staff members care for those residents, they are basically leaning over them, bathing them, changing them. That's an immediate exposure. If you could sew them, wear them, wear them out in public, protect yourself. Thank you.